Um, hi, I'm Susie Murphy. I'm um, a product developer and I have a product that I recently licensed and I'm hoping it will come to market hopefully by January. So I'm excited for that. So I'm here to share some tips on how I did it. Nice. And Warren, would you like to introduce yourself? I'd love to. I was a little bit flustered at the start. Sorry, I was just a bit caught out. Um, yeah, I'm Warren Wilson. I'm an inventor from Australia. I've known Susie for for a few years now, and uh, and she's always inspired me to do better. She's the great PT person, <laughs> and she's always inspired me to do better. And uh, and I love inventing. I I had fortunate enough to invent a kids' building block system called Better Blocks, which was um, quite successful in its time and taught me a lot about inventing. Taught me a lot about how to be successful and taught me a lot about um, what I didn't know about being successful, which is also fairly important, I, I found out in later life. So there's a little bit of my, um, my past, my history. Nice. Would you like to start yeah. presenting and like talk about what you're doing? <laughs> sure, that would be lovely. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as Warren said, he he has a lot more inventing experience than I do, but I feel like I'm closer in touch with some of the pro where a lot of you are because I'm on the earlier stages of inventing. And so, um, today I think we were going to talk about kind of you start with an idea. And then how do you kind of bring it to life and some tips on how we do that? And um, so the initial stage of an idea is, is simply an idea like, oh, that's interesting, but I could make it better or I could do something different with it. But then what do you do from there? And so Warren might have um, something to add regarding his initial idea and then how I believe it was a bicycle chain inspired him. Yes. So I'll let him kind of explain what led from idea to bicycle chain to product, and then we'll uh, give you some more tips. Thanks, Susie. Yeah, I like I have a lot of ideas. Um, and over my lifetime, very few of them have ever become reality. And part of having an idea for me and making it successful is it needs to be something that I really love, like, like something that I believe in and I really love. And then I'll do what it takes to, to get an idea to market because along the journey, I found things didn't always go as I planned. There was often unexpected little humps and sometimes big humps that, that kind of caught me out but if I believed and loved what I was doing like with my blocks I would keep on going I'd find a solution and my idea was was originally thought of um as a as another block an alternative to lego when I was younger there was lego and there was lego and there was lego like if you wanted a construction building block system lego was it and people couldn't copy it at the time and I remember I was at a, at a toy fair in Germany and some people said to me, you know, why well, you're an inventor. Why don't you come up with something? We need something to sell, compete with Lego. And I didn't think anything of it. I said, oh, yeah. And I came back to Adelaide, to Australia, and I was about three months later. And I was remembering, I, I was driving, down the, driving down, the, um, down the main, one of the main roads of Adelaide. And I thought, why not build a building block that moves? And that was the easy part, coming up with the idea. The rest was, it was the challenging part. And like Susie said, um, like Lego, when you clip the blocks together, they form straight lines or right angles generally. And then the blocks didn't move. And I thought, how would I do that? And I just thought, you know, I just kind of looking around, I didn't have really any idea. And I was just looking around, I noticed a bicycle chain. And I thought a bicycle chain as a series of links that clip together and they can move. So why not use that as the principle of my building block system? And again, that was another idea that just, you know, like, like I always find if I want answers, I just look around and often answers come from the most unexpected places. And like, you know, who would have thought you could make a, or, or, an, or a bicycle chain would be an inspiration for a building block system. But it was, and that's what I find most of my answers come from. Often 
unexpectedly. And the success of Better Blocks was a whole series of unexpected events and people came into my life that I could just never, never plan. But, you know, you've got to be in the game for these things to happen. And that's the most important thing. So there's my 20 cents worth of, of <laughs> that little bit of information. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so a bicycle chain inspired him. A um, Mine is in the laundry space. Um, I can generically speak of it at this moment. But so I just took something that kind of existed and I added to it. And some of those ads, just to show a company what that looked like, it was just cardboard pieces and showing how I could do some, um, figure out how to make it do what I want with tape and cardboard in this particular basket. And so tape and cardboard can become your friend. Um, so it can clay if you are think you want it to look a certain way but you aren't an artist or don't know how to do it clay is another great way to think to just get clay and mold it and you know kind of play with it and see does it act how you want or move how you want and so there's a lot of ways to take that idea without spend, spending a ton of money and figure out ways to uh, make it move how you want and look how you want and it doesn't have to be beautiful because you're just trying to see could it get close to something that maybe could make it um, and once you see it like that and you play with it a lot of times you change how you thought it might be because you you thought it might work one way, but then you get the tape and the glue out and all these things, and then it's not quite working that way. So you have to try to figure out your new problem, but it's always an adventure to try to figure out how to get it to do close to what you thought, but work through the problems. And so your brain is always working. It's never a dull moment in, in this space. And so um, you always try to find creative solutions. So Warren, I think yeah. you have more to add on that. You might even have some examples. <laughs> well, I do have a little more to add on that. Yeah, because yeah, because what you said made me think about um, about prototypes and like like I was fortunate that I had a little engineering shop and I could make my prototypes, um, but they were just that like they weren't like the real thing. But here's what I noticed was was that was that people here was the key thing for me because I saw many good ideas or even, you know, bet far better ideas than my better blocks, never make it into the marketplace. And here I was just an ordinary guy working out of his backyard shed in, in Adelaide, Australia that no one had really ever heard of. And, you know, after about a few years of work, it was just, it was quite a successful, better blocks was quite a successful international product. But what, and, and I thought, well, why why me right i said i'm not that i wasn't that clever a guy why me and there was a couple of things i did and one of them was was i was just more persistent like the people who didn't get their products into the marketplace stopped and at the end of the day that that like it was as simple as that they just stopped and they gave up you know they came against problems that they couldn't solve easily and they just gave up and the other thing I realized was that persistence comes from the inside out. Like, like when I was talking to, to, um, to people like who could possibly make my product or possibly finance it or, or you know, market it, sell it, a whole lot of skills that, that I didn't have that I knew I needed to make it successful. What they were really backing was kind of me. It wasn't so much my idea. And that was a difference. Like if you, if you're really excited about your idea and you genuinely believe it's a great idea, people get it. And not everyone will want to come involved. And sometimes it takes a few years to get that, that absolute belief in it. But, it. but if you do, if you can do that, people will just want to come on board with you because they do, because they like you. And if, if they kind of like you, well, then they'll, they'll back your idea. And I find that's a very important element to building a team or getting people involved in, in what you do is to have that.
belief in what you do. And, and the more you have that belief, it just kind of radiates out from you. And I, you know, I don't mean an arrogance and that, which, which, you know, I've had over times and things like that, which are not work, but it's that genuine calmness. So when you speak about your idea, you know, it's going to work. And what you need is people who can help, who have the skills that I didn't have, and you know, I didn't have plenty of skills um, to make it work. And that, that's kind of what I, what I found. But what I did also realize is that Susie mentioned about my idea, better blocks. Well, I did have a movie, but I'm sorry, I've, I've kind of stuffed that up. But what I do have is I got some examples of my better blocks and you can see how they fit together and you can see how they move. And what they do is they clip together like that and they move. And because they move, kids can build round things and all different shapes and all different areas of things. And that, and that provided a bit of an advantage, or not, not an advantage really over Lego, but it just gave people an alternative. It gave them a different appeal. So that was a little bit of my um, story. So thanks, Susie, for, for, for kind of um, finding my memory about that. Thank you. Oh, sure. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> so um, so a lot of a, a lot of you are kids. You think, where's who's my team? I don't I'm a kid. How am I going to find a team that that just seems crazy? Um, but you might not have to look that far. <laughs> um, your team can be uh, your mom, your dad, they might have some talents. We always look to our parents, but besides our parents, they might have a friend who has a special area that they know how to do something that you're looking to do, maybe an engineer, or if your um, invention is in the medical space, whatever area it's in, I bet if you guys looked enough, somebody in your family friend group probably um, could help you in some way, at least to answer questions if you are stuck on something. So back to the team, it's amazing once you start asking people questions, who they know, everybody knows someone. So it just kind of grows and before you know it, you are told about someone that you didn't even know was possible to exist and you stumble upon them and then they help you. And so it's, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask your parents to think about people that they know if you feel like this is too much for you, um, because there's people everywhere and most people want to help. Genuine people just want to help each other. And I know that that kind of happened for me. Um, it took one phone call that led to another person who led to another person. Then they helped me bring my product to market with things I was stuck on. And so if I didn't ask the question of the first person, I wouldn't have got two people down the road to help me with my my product. And I think that happened to Warren too. Maybe you can share a little bit more of your journey, Warren, with that. Yeah, that did, and and, and that's a great it's a great message. What you said, Susie, about kids, particularly asking for help, because. And also, what you said about like people do love to help other people out, and I. I do, and I find that that I wouldn't have been anywhere near as successful in anything if people didn't help me out. And it's just the ability to ask people, and even if pe even if you think they know nothing about what you do, that do right, it pays to ask them. And here's, here's how it worked out for me. I was looking. I had the idea better blocks, and I spent a couple of years going around most of Australia trying to find people who are interested in it, and and they loved the product, but no one wanted to be involved. And I was talking to my sisters boyfriend a gentleman called John Wilkie and I was just telling John about better blocks and what I was doing and um John was a cabinet maker a carpenter he knew nothing about well he had a daughter so he knew he knew kids love toys but he knew nothing <laughs> about toys nothing about marketing nothing about any of the any of the so-called stuff that you that you should know about right and John said to me oh I do you remember this he said to me Warren he said why don't you ring up a mate of mine Kelvin Claney he lives in America, and I think he might be interested in what you're doing. Well, I rang up Kelvin, and as a result of that offhand comment right, by a carpenter who knew nothing about toys and nothing about marketing, we sold six billion blocks and generated 
$45 million in sales. And, and, that, and that's, that's what uh, me and Susie are trying to say, that you just got to speak to people because you just never know. You just never know where the right person or the right answer or the help is going to come from. And, and that, that was a great lesson for me. And I, and, and I find kids are great at that. Like Kids just love blurting out their new stuff and their greatest ideas enthusiastically. <laughs> And if and if they do that, you know, just these just these unexpected help may come in, just may come into your life, you know. So it's just about it's just about genuinely telling people what you're doing, and asking, you know, look, so you know, I need a bit of help here. I need a bit of advice. What do you think about this? And and you know, people love being asked their opinions. And if you can ask your friend, you know, like I'm a bit stuck here. What what are your ideas on this? You just never know. You just you just never know. So yeah, it's a great point you make, Susie, about asking for help. You know, you know, it's a really important one, I think. Great. Um, thanks for sharing that. Uh, so the other thing to consider is um, I'm going to share a little bit more about my story. So <clears throat> I showed my initial idea to uh, a company, and they liked it. But when it went through a couple of reviews, they're like, eh, "I don't know about that. I'm not. We're we're not quite there." So um, they said, but the the gal um, who gave me the feedback of the no initially, she I asked her, well, is there anything you can tell me more about why it was a no? What can I do? And she happened to say, well, it's a no for us, but I really like it. So I want you to talk to this friend of mine who knows other people. And so that friend then connected me with someone who helped me figure out how to make the costs of the product um, less so that it could be a yes somewhere. And by working with that person, then I was able to get the yes. So it took several steps, but just because um, if you're going through the licensing or any roadblocks you got, just because you got a no, listen to what the no is. It could be great advice. Yeah. And if you take it into consideration, then it will take you down the road of getting the yes. And so eventually those no's turn into a yes. As back to what Warren said, you have to be, you have to want it and just keep at it. Don't give up. Be and if that means that you have to change what you've done, it might not look exactly how you thought it would, but listen to what people want. And by listening to what people want will get you to your yes and getting it in front of people who would like to buy what you're offering. And so it's sad to get a no. Nobody likes to hear it, but it the more you're okay with the no's and listen to what all the no's are, it will turn into a yes if you stick to it. So I just want to encourage all of you not to give up because no's become yeses. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Susie. It's a, it's a great point about no's, and it, and it reminds me of also, just because people used to say no to me, I was fortunate in that I never really took it personally. Like a lot of people take no's personally, and there's some areas that I do, but but inventing was never really one of them. And because I didn't take it personally, I, I would just, well, you know, they're not interested in my ideas because they have other things that interest them whatever they are right? they're not and, and my idea is not one of them and the real key is is just to find people who are interested in your ideas and it's like it's like the movies you know some of us have favorite movies you know my favorite movies that my wife goes no Warren I'm not watching that with you right and it's not personally it's just that, just that they don't interest her and ideas and inventions are the same. Not everyone's going to be interested in your idea. Not everyone's going to buy it. But the key is, is to keep going till you find people who are interested. And they're the ones that are going to become great team members. And you can only do that by speaking with people. You know, it's where it all starts. Absolutely. Right. Because if you get your product into a company, you want them to love it. Not just, eh. Because then they become your partner and then you're both working together for a common reason to get it out together and, 
and see what happens to it. And it's exciting for both of you. So if it's just exciting for one person, then the other person <laughs> may not um, help it out as much as you're hoping for. So it's, it's, it's a great feeling when people get excited and you're both excited together and you work together to get it out there. And it just feels really great. So don't give up. Get the no's. See what you need to do to change them to yeses. Don't forget about your cardboard <laughs> and all the clay and all the pieces to bring it all together. But um, you can do it. it. It's not just a dream. It's possible for all of you. So, Julie, I don't know if you want to ask, have anyone ask questions or we continue on. Hi, this is Deborah. I have a couple of questions. If I could, I am um, oh, sure. Sure. I I love the the path that you're on and just in terms of sharing these fundamentals about reaching out, like use your cardboard, use your duct tape, <laughs> use your clay. Um, and what I think, you know, for you, Susie and Warren, what you're showing to others as well is what I often see with the students that we work with is that the idea is there. And sometimes it's, well, do I share it with other people or not? <laughs> and the, the idea of sharing it is actually, as you both demonstrated, you want to get it out and show it to people and see, see more of that. But I think there's also this sense of, well, what if I show it to somebody and they take my idea? And so I'd be curious from your experience, you know, what is that balance between having a great idea and showing it to others, but then feeling like, oh, how do I make sure somebody doesn't take my great idea, especially if it's made of cardboard and twine? Yes, Warren, do you want to start or you want me to? <laughs> no, I'm happy to start. I, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question because he, and here's why, right? Inventors and people are often very secretive people and they like not, this is a broad generalization, they, they don't, you know, they say not, not to share your ideas because of they're going to be stolen and all the rest of it, right? I never, ever subscribe to that philosophy. I would tell everybody and anybody about what I had simply because I needed people on my team. And if people didn't know, well, they went, you know, how are they going to choose to be on my team? The other thing is I have an inherent trust for people. And it's kind of brought me unstuck a couple of times, big time in life. I had a few lessons to learn. But also I find people are trustworthy. Like most of the most of the people I know, look, I can't think of a person that I know that I wouldn't trust. Right. And the other thing is, is that like if someone steals your idea, they've got to go through the same process as you to get it into the marketplace. Right. Now with better blocks, that was like it cost Kelvin um thirty thousand dollars just to test it out. And then it was another probably hundred and fifty thousand dollars investment after that. And then then it went on. So it's like, it's okay to, for, to think if I share this with my friend, they're going to steal it. or share, But then, as I said, they've got to have the resources and that to get it into the marketplace. And they've got to do the same things that you've got to do. So mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, ideas do get stolen, right? When you have a look at the big, the bigger companies, ideas do. I'm not saying they don't get stolen. And I'm not recommending everybody does this. But for me, I just, I just shared my ideas with everybody. When it came to inventions, I never had anything stolen. And what I what I gained was just way, 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 way more than not sharing it, you know, because I would have never been successful, to be honest, if I hadn't shared it. So there's my opinion, you know, there's my my experience, but it's not often, it's not always what you'll hear from inventors and that. Well, so I'm the opposite of him. I did not share. <laughs> when I first started, I was very worried about what you're talking about, Deborah. Um, and so um, a couple things that helped me um, get a little less stressed about it was that um, when you talk to people, you don't have to tell them every detail. Maybe you're stuck on one part. You can just talk about that part. You don't have to tell them the whole thing or just talk about it um, without, giving all the information, give them some. So you can talk to people that way. So that's one piece of advice. 
The other thing that I would recommend is, um, and I know people are from all over the world, so I don't know, this applies in the United States, um, which is you can get something called a provisional patent. And it's like, it's $75 to just put it in with the United States Patent Office. And it's kind of a placeholder for you to shop it for a year. And so that tells people that I've put, basically put this application in, and it is holding my spot because I got there first with this idea. And so once I did that, then I felt comfortable sharing a sell sheet with companies because I've declared or said that, you know, I, I'm, I'm in there and the details are for me to know. And I've, I've shared it with the patent office. So that was another way that I kind of got, okay, this seems safer. Um, and, and so those are kind of, and uh, as you go through this process more, um, I feel like you get more comfortable because most people aren't one idea people. If you're, most people have several ideas. And so it would be horrible if one got taken, but, um, you know, way more about it than anyone else. And if by the time someone probably sees it, you're already 10 steps ahead of them. So just keep that in mind. And it's always a who can get to the market first. And who can get to the market first is the person probably who originated or the idea mm -hmm. came to first. So um, things to think about. So I feel like the more you do it, the more comfortable you are talking about it more. But I understand being scared because this is kind of your baby that you just love and want to protect. <laughs> but um, I hope that helps answer that question. Yeah, I think that's great wise, wise advice and to, you know, through community and creativity, um, greater things happen, but there is that wisdom along the way. So thank you both for sharing yours. Um, sure. Maya, I think you had a question. Just... Your hand was up. Yeah. Um, has there ever been like a time in the journey where you felt like you just wanted to quit because it was like tough or like? <laughs> Warren, <laughs> you want to go first? I start with that one? Yeah, absolutely. And anyone who says that they never have, I don't know if they're really quite telling the whole story. There's been many times in a lot of things I do, particularly things that are important to me, that I go, well, this is just way too hard. Like this is way, way, way harder than I ever that I ever expected. And and sometimes for me it's it's particularly these days, I need to stop for a little while. Because I'm a person who who loves trying to push things, right? And I don't know about you, but I haven't found many people when I'm trying to push them, they really like it. Down. <laughs> There's a lot of resistance comes back. And it's the same with projects. If I try and push it and I'm trying to push it and force it to make it work, it just doesn't work and it becomes too hard. And that's when I go, wow, this is too hard. And, and I think I want to give up. But, but so I'll take a bit of time out and then, and then I don't know what happens, but it's like I have a new spark of inspiration or something else will happen. And then I'll, then I'll go on again. It's, it's like, I, and I can't describe it, but yeah, there's certainly times that, that I want to give up, but I guess inside I know, well, I'm not going to give up. I'd really love to give up right? and take the easy way out, but I'm not going to, but I just need to admit, I, I got no idea what to do. So I just need to, to wallow around and I've got no idea what to do for a while until I, I find something that I can do. And often it's just some little step that will get me back on the road again, you know. So yeah, that's, that's part of my process, what I found, you know. So it's not all, it's not all um, as they say, what is it, chocolates and champagne all the time, you know. There's <laughs> sometimes when there's not, not, not much of anything there that you just keep going. Correct. I would I would agree with him on that. Take taking a, a step away or back to all those no's. Look at what they all said. Why was it a no? And then think about it. And then maybe you change something because you're stuck. Um, and it's amazing how that can change into the, the yeses. 
So you have to look at what did, what did all those no's say, even though they weren't great. But then those days that you're feeling really low and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. You'll get one email that says, I liked it except for this, or it was really clever. It's just not for us today. So there's always these little things along the way that keep you going because if you never sent the email, you would never know that there was something there that made your day. And it it's it it may not have been a yes, but it was something positive. So yeah, and also could I just add there one thing is that that I think you touched on it a bit, Susie, is, is that me, I had a few really I never had a big circle of friends or people, but I had some really close friends around me. And they were the people that I would go to sometimes. And they were the people that would change my attitude. And they were the people, sometimes I needed other people to believe in me. Because it's okay to say believe in yourself and all the rest of it, right? And you can do that. But sometimes when you get really, um, you know, things aren't going so well, it's 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 your friends or that who will just give you that little spark of inspiration. Say, look, come on, Warren, you can do this. You know, you've done it before. And I go, yeah, all right. And then I'll go. So so the group of people you're, you've got around you, whether they be your friends or your parents or whoever they are, are, are really gold. Now, they may not know anything about your invention, but they're really gold because they'll, they'll be the people when times are tough, they'll be by your side. Well, thank you very much, Warren and Susie. That was really informative and, uh, yeah, practical, very practical. <laughs> how do you bring your inventions to market and how much you, how do you need that team, that team and those circles of uh, trust and the people who tell you the truth. Thank you so much for joining us on thank GIFT uh, again.